Yeah, um, I mean the introduction already came, so uh, I was I was just about to say that uh, you are running the leading field management platform. So I do it again, category leader in field management. Yeah, thank you. That's true. But like I'm I'm just like amazed by the two pictures. Who are these two guys? Like it's I don't know them. It's like kudos to Photoshop because maybe the first time we met we looked like this. You remember? Yes, very young and clear. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so what are we going to talk about today? Yeah, I mean, you know, kicking, kicking things off. Um, when we first met, it was a whole different world, whole different story. That's true. Um, we were not in a very nice office. Um, my partner, Markus, founder of Delivery Hero, he introduced us. And um, I don't know, how was, how was your experience? Um, yes, that's true. Actually, I, I, I just talked to Max to get feedback for our new thing for Plan Raider, and then we ended up working together with Cavalry. And uh, yeah, I remember like uh, it was in Axel Springer Gasse, right? Or oh, Axel Springer Straße, this like very uh, different office, let's call it that way. So I was not sure if these guys even have money when I was there, but uh, it turned out to be a really cool thing. <laughs> so congrats I mean, on Cavalry, uh, right? Thank you so much. <laughs> and that you actually uh, trusted us despite the uh, linoleum floor <laughs> yes. that we had. <laughs> yeah, and you know, since, since then, I mean, it was a terrific story um, from, you know, the, the mission alignment that we had where uh, you set out very early to build a category leader in your field. And, and right now, Sander, you are sitting here and Zurich Airport um, is, is using Plan Radar. The question really to me is nowadays, who isn't using Plan Radar? Yeah, actually, there are like there are a lot of customers. I would say, like you, you mentioned, airport. So the the German airport, they didn't use us. This 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 I know for sure. But like, yeah, it became pretty broad. You know, back in the days when we started and when we met, we were just focusing this uh, small niche of GCs, general contractors, uh, defect management, snagging, punch lists. And nowadays, we are serving like the entire building lifecycle, and we have like more than uh, twenty thousand customers worldwide from sixty five countries. So it. Yeah, at the beginning, uh, we even didn't thought by ourselves that uh, it will go like uh, that way. But it's an international problem that we are solving. Yeah. I remember, Sander, and you are, you, are, you are known as a sales cannon. So that's your reputation in this, in this business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what's like next? I mean, you just briefly touched upon next uh, clients. Tell us a little bit about geographic expansion, maybe further horizontalization. Where is the business now? What's cracking under the hood? Sure. Yeah, so we started like in Little Austria and uh, yeah, then uh, covered Dach and then uh, started in, by 19 BioSeries A. Uh, our target was like to become or to own Europe. And since 22, we uh, go or went global. So we have now uh, sites in 18 uh, countries, although it's a digital solution, right? But we need to have people on the ground because our industry is like very old fashioned, I would say. So all these construction and real estate people, they want to meet people, they want to talk in their own language. Um, so we are everywhere and still it's about growing, right? Uh, although our industry, they are having a, really a tough time right now, I would say. So uh, all, I guess all of you read newspapers, so all these companies that are going bankrupt uh, nowadays, all of them are our customers. <laughs> but thanks to God, uh, we are diversified enough uh, worldwide and you see other regions like let's say the Emirates for example there is no crisis and wherever something is built or wherever you know existing buildings are refurbished um, this is where where plan reader can be used mm -hmm. yeah, as you said so a crisis creates opportunity when there is yeah, that's true yeah you know when there's a bull market uh, many people can can sail but the bad weather sailors so so what do you see in terms of activity in the market how is, how is growth among your competitors, uh, you know, was it organically, inorganically, what do your clients say? Um, that would be super interesting to, to learn more. Yeah, sure. Um, so, like, we still grow organically. So, of course, our plans changed, you know, end of 21. Uh, it was, like, 100% top-line growth. Nowadays, it's more on the efficient growth side, which means, like, in our case, like, 60 to 70% year-on-year. That's the target. Uh, we can meet this, uh, but not, of course, not only with construction real estate. It's, like, everything that is that is asset-related. And, yeah, times are tough, right? Also, especially in our 
category because there was like 15 years of, of rising prices, 15 years where a lot of people can earn money, where, you know, uh, every small grocery shop owner was a real estate developer on the site who just developed some flats. These times are over, right? So when you talk to the people, they, they say like survive until 25. This is like uh, uh, how they frame it right now. But as said, for us, uh, this international uh, globalization thing is a big one. So we still invest, we still grow. We kicked off this year in the US, in Brazil, uh, which are quite interesting markets. But as said, also GCC, there's happening a lot of stuff. And we still want to grow organically this uh, 60 to 70 percent. In addition, what you see is, and I think it's, uh, it's not only in our vertical, there are a lot of companies who cannot attract money uh, anymore or uh, who, let's say, uh, need to, to, to merge. Um, so just, just we as an example, and we are not heavily focusing on M&A, but just this year there are around like eight to ten companies offered to us already. And yes, sometimes it makes sense, sometimes not, but let's put it that way, we are like uh, opportun opportunistic, so if something makes sense, we are going to do it. And we have like one of the best investors, so no problem, right, Ruven? Thank you very much. I take that credit for my colleagues and uh, for, the other, for the other people on the board, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, and yeah, of course, also uh, great for the investors that you were able to, to convince, like, um, you know, Headline or, or Insight, um, who, who joined later down the road. So cash, you know, you have always been a very cash efficient company. That's and true. I remember uh, in this completely long bull market we have seen over, over the past decade plus, numerous conversations with your board where the board was like, Xander, you have to increase burn. You have to increase burn by all means. And in the beginning, you stood strong. Then you slowly increased burn a bit more. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's always reasonable, but the same people, you know, they were always, as Ruben said, like every time we are cash flow positive, I get complaints. We are losing growth on the table. Nowadays, the same people, like every time we are cash flow positive, they, I get applaud. So like uh, time changed, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speaking about the environment, um, that like I mean, you are you are known as an extremely capital efficient company, and, and that's yes. um, of of benefit to you these days. You don't need to raise cash. Uh, you can uh, have you know further funding opportunities if you ever want to um, uh, fund yourself differently than than equity, which is a whole separate discussion. But uh, looking forward, what what are potential given the audience also here of Noah? Um, you know there are many. Uh, uh, growth investors, there are buyout funds, there's uh, uh, Noah itself, uh, uh, Marco and team doing, doing M&A. Um, if you look at the capital markets, what's like potentially in for, for Plan Radar? Also, how do you see the current environment as a capital efficient company? Um, yeah, what's what's in? Yeah, you know, it's like always when you when you don't need money, you will get it. Um, but I think, generally spoken, the whole environment it's also it's challenging for like founders or early stages. But at the same time, I think it's a good environment because if you're forced to to be efficient or to bootstrap um, or to you know get cash flow, then your business model will adapt and you get out of this comfort zone. This is really a good thing because you are prepared for for better times. And it was exactly like this for us, as you mentioned. Like we were, you, we did. Uh, somehow a later seed round, we had already like 500 or 600 K of ARR at that time, which we built by ourselves. So yeah, build a business model where you have good cash flow, then, then you can grow from that. And as said, I think there's money out there you can still raise. The bar is higher, of course, uh, than before. And for us, it's very opportunity driven. So if we do some M&A stuff, um, yeah, we will, uh, we will uh, I would say like we will add capital for sure, like I cannot say in which form or how, but yes, for sure we'll do that. There are interesting opportunities. We're looking at different stuff, except especially geo-wise, let's say in Americas or in, in APAC. And yeah, that's why I'm here, right? Awesome. Talking about your your workforce. I mean, your whole workforce is, is uh, grew up, the, the ones from the very early beginning and the ones who later joined, with the understanding how to operate in a very capital efficient uh, mindset and also way. What are the advantages you as an entrepreneur um, currently are able to, to reap because of that factor? And maybe also when it comes to hiring further employees, do you sometimes see a culture mismatch here? 
Um, yes, of course, it's very uh, challenging, especially with 18 different sites. And just imagine when we went from one floor to two floors, it was already a challenge just to keep everybody on track and in the same culture. And we always ask people like to act like if it's their own money. And unfortunately, a lot of people act different <laughs> with company money than with their own money. And this is always what we ask, and this is like what, what, what we are living as well. Let's put it that way. Like I, me personally, I get we are now around 500 people, but I get nervous when I live in Hyatt Regency and not in Motel One, <laughs> or when I stay. Not like you, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whom you're talking about. <laughs> do you do you have a favorite um, spot in your office or in your offices? A favorite spot where, in my office. Where do you work when you're with? Yeah, in the office. I work in the course, office. I'm but, not in the but home where office. do you have your like your ivory tower desk or? How yeah, can you a know, like picture Sander van der Rijt every day in the office. Yeah, I'm every day in the office, like uh, early, because I have kids, so I stand up early and I stay late. And I can tell you another thing, like this is another <laughs> tick of mine, because like I'm the the last person at the office, so I go around and turn off all the lights because people don't turn off lights. So I want to be en environmental. This is one of my little secrets, office secrets. But like, yeah, I'm there, and I work. <laughs> nice. Again, not like you, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Still don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what, what does this mean? That's a very good question. Yeah, we're talking two minutes too long already, I think. Well, then let's uh, wrap it up, shall we? I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> well prepared, Ruben. Thank, Thank you very you. much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.